The following program is based on actual true stories on the high seas. These true stories are fish stories. This week, we visit Hawaii, but first, the DR, the Dominican Republic, a Caribbean country steeped in old Spanish world charm and natural beauty, and big game fishing. Enter two longtime fishing buddies. These guys started putting hooks in the water when they could barely talk. This trip, the Casa de Campo Resort is home base. Sport fishing and luxury cruising is big here. This week, Ken and Dan have hired The Chaser, piloted by Captain Tim Richardson. He and his seasoned crew are geared up to take these boys on a big fish rendezvous. Can't wait to get there. Most interesting, interesting fishing I've ever done in my life. You against a marlin. Today, the chaser heads 20 miles south. Spanish galleons sailed through these waters over 500 years ago. The Isle of uh, Hispaniola, where Columbus landed. Plenty blue marlin here. We're going fishing this morning for him on a light tackle. Pitch him a bait or have me eat a little value on 30 pound test stand up. We tend to pitch off the switch chains, 80, 90% of our fish off the teasers. Pulling two dredges three or four ballyhoos, and then we have a pitch bait as well. The same rods we use for catching bait in Australia is what we use for catching marlin here, so it's a little bit different extreme, but we're matching the tackle to the size of the fish. Most of the blues here are 100 to 200 pounds. Occasionally you get a, a bigger one, three, 350, 400. Yeah. Time to get to work. Blue marlin bites start early here. Dan's got the rod. And this one's a pole bender. Oh my goodness. That was a great bite we just had at the back of the boat. Now we've been having stuck to a fish for a while. I don't think this is an 80 pounder. Just going down. Crew takes aim at setting the tag, but not before getting a little head fake by the fish. Uh -oh, he's in the back. This is a pretty blue. They'll tag it and release it. Score one for Dan Woo! in the DR. A lot of adrenaline. A lot of adrenaline. It's absolutely the most incredible thing I've ever done. Stand up marlin fishing. It's the only way to go. And I'm exhausted. Boom! The benefits of fishing, other than catching, are the strong friendships that are forged at sea. Well, Dan goes back a long ways. See, I'm, I was born in 1950. He was born in 49. And we've known each other since the age of about two. Always on the water. I feel very comfortable with the water. I remember you used to go out in the little rowboat out in the middle of the bay. You know, what were your parents thinking? Throughout our journeys on Marlin Quest, 
friends will travel halfway around the world to meet for a few precious days to fish, tell stories, and stoke the fires of friendship. American poet Henry David Thoreau said it best, many men go fishing all of their lives without really knowing that it's not fish that they're after. <laughs> Marlin Quest will unite men and women with a common passion, spending precious time on the ocean with a fishing pole aimed at catching a remarkable and beautiful ocean predator. The real byproduct of that is the chance to be around others with the very same earnestness. It's always good to have a best friend with your fishing. Makes the day go by quick. While Ken and Dan troll the waters in the Dominican Republic, there's great anticipation on the other side of the planet. Hawaii, an old stomping ground of theirs since the early 1980s. The Kona Coast on the Big Island of Hawaii, a fishery unlike any other on the planet. How different? Giant Pacific blue marlin, over a thousand pounds, could pass by the mouth of this harbor and up and down the shoreline any day. You don't have to travel far, not to mention a massive diversity of other pelagic species, ahi tuna, rare spearfish, and more. Kona, Hawaii is the mecca for giant Pacific blue marlin. It's why big game anglers from around the globe make their pilgrimage here every year. Today, their close colleague, Captain Kevin Hibbert, is on the second offense, a legendary 43-foot custom boat by Allied Marine. This beautiful vessel is built and designed to run fast and back down hard on Pacific Blue Marlin. Most will tell you Captain Kevin keeps up with what's going on around him, even if it's almost 6,000 miles away. Dan just got himself a nice one uh, with King Corday over in uh, Dominican Republic, so it's our turn now. Joining Kevin today is angler Alex Durham, wife of first mate Nick. She holds the women's uh, world record on 130, a 958-pounder she got in 2013. So she's capable of anything, which is pretty cool. It's um, always a pleasure to have her with us. <laughs> and she's happy to be here. Big Tata, Old Faithful for Big Mom. Give it 20 minutes. The second offense heads south to a known lair of hungry marlin. We've got a chance. Head to the secret spot. Tantrum lures are carving their way to a marlin buffet, lighting up the ocean surface. And we have a visitor. Short rigger! Short rigger! Here it comes! Marlin Quest is brought to you by Airmar Technology, the leaders in chirp transducer technology, and by the Royal Kona Resort, an oceanfront landmark in the heart of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. You've already made a great choice in electronics. Now, achieve sonar superiority with an Airmar Chirp Transducer. Advanced Chirp technology that can find them in wrecks and find them in the depths. That's sonar superiority by Airmar. That it's not going to fail. And no matter what tournament it's in, no matter how much that money it in, I can lay my head down on that pillow at night and go, this is the finest hook money's ever built and technology's ever had. The second offense, skippered by Captain Kevin Hibbert, has traveled south of Honokohal Harbor in front of Red Hill, a prominent fishing area notorious for hungry marlin. We got Jen. Ravenous might be a better word. Head to the secret spot. A little known fact, marlin have unique eyesight. When looking down, they only see in black and white, which offers the greatest contrast and detail when locating their prey. But when looking forward or up, they see in color. And these well-crafted tantrum lures skimming across the surface are like catnip of the sea.
area for a good look. Yeah, good. <laughs> she can turn a handle. Woo. Wait all day long for one of these bites. First mate Nick Durham grabs the leader. This fish is a fatty. Guys. That's 500 every day of the week. Yeah, 500. If you're going to catch a fish like this, a photo op is a must. It's a classic beauty in the beast moment. Nice. Captain Kevin pulls the hook and releases this healthy billfish safely back into the blue. Conservation of these species is high priority. Yeah, babe. Yes. Her reputation lives on. So this is a lure that we caught Alex's 500 pounder on. I call this uh, the large AMN. AMN stands for any minute now, because it's pretty much a ticking time bomb when it's out there. Four hours of nothingness. Saw the fish come up jumping, Alex got in the chair, did an awesome job, and uh, we finished her off with a 500 pounder. Easy five. It fought really hard. There it is. It was uh, bigger than we thought. Considered it a nice one here in Kona. Um, obviously we're in March, so anything can happen. <laughs> a typical fish you'll catch in most places? Probably not. A typical day here in Kona? You betcha. Stepping onto a charter boat for the first time could be a bit mind-blowing. From the giant reels to the huge lures, everything looks pretty foreign. But I promise you, all this gear on the boat that we call tackle has a specific function. Most important, the boat. This is your teaser. Your boat is the most important tool in raising or attracting fish. Lures and hooks. The lure is your second most important tool in attracting fish because it brings the fish directly to your line. Rods and reels. These enable you to get the fish from the ocean to the back of the boat. The line you use can range in test strength from two pounds to 130 pounds, depending on the species you're after. This is the tag stick, and it's used to attach the tag when we tag and release a fish. These are the riggers. They allow us to troll multiple lures in different positions behind the boat and keep the lines from becoming tangled with each other. These are just some of the basic tools and tackle you'll find on a charter boat. Tackle that's designed to help you catch that fish of a lifetime. Quest is brought to you by Airmar Technology, the leaders in chirp transducer technology, and by the Royal Kona Resort, an oceanfront landmark in the heart of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. At Release Marine, our custom woodworking facility specializes in handcrafted sport fishing equipment and yacht furniture. Quality, durability, imagination. Release Marine. Always lead, never follow. Big game fish aren't the only resource found on Hawaii's Kona Coast. There's also world famous, highly prized Kona coffee, grown year round and nurtured by Hawaii's sun, ample rainfall, and rich volcanic soil. Handpicked with care and sun dried with over a hundred years of traditional know how, this roasted aromatic treasure is a great way to greet the morning and prepare to tackle a day at sea. I've been very fortunate to have been raised here in Kona, where a number of world-class anglers and captains and crews have come through. So I've been able to meet a lot of people, which led me to travel and experience uh, a lot of the fishing that's done all over the world. And my focus was on big fish, over a thousand. And so I was able to see where the thousand pound fish go, like Australia and Madeira. My first grander that I was able to weigh was a black marlin on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. And my second was an Atlantic blue marlin that we weighed in Madeira, Portugal, where I fished a number of years. 
but my most significant catch was the fish that we caught here in Kona. In 2001, we were trolling off a red hill at 500 fathoms, and we had a bite on the long rigger. Little did we know, we had a big one on. We started chasing it, and the fight ended up 12 minutes long. Once we got it in the boat, we saw that it was skinny, but really didn't see the short measurement of it, and it was a 12-foot short. It ended up weighing 11.15, and so when you least expect it, here it is. For now, we bid farewell to the Hawaiian Islands and travel back to the Caribbean to check in with Ken and Dan. Captain Tim takes the chaser 20 miles southwest of the resort and heads for the ledge. Tim cut his teeth on sport fishing early on. I started fishing on the Gold Coast in Australia for uh, Blue Marl and a Little Blacks back in the mid to late 80s. 10 years on the deck in Australia gets you pretty tuned up to working hard. Today, they're trolling down a line of homemade buoys. In the Caribbean, most of the local fishermen put fads out, and fad stands for fish attracting device. Mostly in the Caribbean, it's a piece of concrete, a whole lot of 3 8 poly rope, and then up on top, they just have a, a collection of styrofoam. And typically here in the DR, there's, there's, there's uh, grids of fads, and they're typically about half a mile apart running north-south. Fishing in the vicinity of these fads can sometimes be a source of contention. First mate Garrett sees what could be trouble brewing on the horizon. Then a 175 pounder bites the short rigger. Ken takes the rod and it's game on. into this fish fight, trouble arrives, a rude interruption, fish pirates. You've already made a great choice in electronics. Now achieve sonar superiority with an Airmar Chirp Transducer, advanced chirp technology that can find them in wrecks and find them in the depths. That's sonar superiority by Airmar. I bought, you know, every single brand of manufacturer's hooks and I laid them on top of each other. And then I realized over the last 40 years of sport fishing, we have not moved the needle at all on our hookup percentage. Tim has taken his anglers, Ken Corday and Dan Dore, 20 miles southwest of the DR. After an epic battle with a 175-pound Atlantic Blue Marlin, Ken and the crew of the Chaser find themselves confronted by local fishermen who have one thing in mind. Steal the Blue Marlin. They're not even asking. They're demanding it insisting they have full rights to it. Their plan is to force their way in when the fish comes in, gaff it, and take it. Garrett grabs the leader, and the locals close in with their gaffs. In the process of wrapping the fish, a near collision. Just in time, the fish throws the hook and escapes unharmed. An accident like this can be deadly. And Garrett lets the pirates know it. He's not happy. In the end, a win-win for the good guys and the fish. There are a zillion reasons why fishing is good for the mind, the body, and the spirit. It teaches us patience, 
It teaches us an appreciation of the moment. You're not fishing until you're not fishing, which means you're not actually going about catching a fish until you stop thinking about catching a fish. Let the line out, set the hooks, set the drag, set the baits, set your lures, set everything up, get it to a place where you trust it, then you sit back and you have a soda and talk to your friend and forget about the fishing. The fish will come. You're not fishing until you're not fishing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs>